Here's John. Thank you, Gary. Coach Garrett, I got to tell you, you know, you, you've talked about the kind of kids you want to recruit. Smart kids, um, uh, well-rounded kids. The, the record is what it is. Talk about your team, how they view it, because anybody with eyes has got to see the improvement and the fight in these kids every week. How about that effort? How about that effort? That was remarkable how uh, we just kept fighting. Uh, it's a credit to these kids. I mean, they just, two great traits that we look for all the time is humility and grit. And boy, there's our team have it. Um, they just kept fighting. Um, and I'm just really proud of their effort. I, I challenge anyone in the league to have played the schedule you have. Now, again, you know, the results, you're a competitive guy. You want to win the game. But it's only year two and a half. And every time we seem to call a name on a big play, it happened to be a freshman being supported by some of the older guys. But your freshmen are stepping up big time, coach, and they're playing against an experienced, well-schooled football team. Well, we really like every guy on our team. Uh, and we have some really good seniors, juniors, sophomores, freshmen. And they're all battling. And uh, so proud of them. And uh, it, it, it really stinks that we don't have a skin on the wall for how we're playing because we're playing the right way. Uh, tough, hard-nosed, competitive football. And I'm really proud of this group. I'm telling you, Coach, you keep going in this direction. The Patriot League looms. And I know what that's what everyone here in that locker room is waiting for. Good luck. Good get, get him down at Princeton. Let's get one on the wall before we go to league play. But I see good things ahead. Yeah, everybody's taking notice what's happening in Easton, PA. And uh, uh, we just got to keep going. I right? just got to keep going. Go Leopards. Good luck, Coach. Go get him. Thank right, you. Thanks. Yes, sir. Gary, uh, Michael, uh, Marco Olivas. Marco. You saw the numbers last week when this team went uh, at, at Delaware, against Delaware, put up those rushing numbers. 17 tackles today for you. Talk about what you saw on the film. Talk about your preparation and, and what kind of challenge it was today. Uh, just preparation. You know, we just had our coaches come up with a game plan for us to be successful and, you know, just try to do what I do. We, got a, we for sure got a lot of things to work on. You know, um, nothing's perfect, but... You know, there's still some light at the end of the tunnel with our team. Haven't started Patriot League play yet, waiting for that. But, you know, still still want to get that win no matter what. That was my next question, and I'll let you go, Marco. But, you know, nothing grows in the darkness on the one hand, so you don't have a win to show for your efforts yet. What's the mood like in the locker room? Do you guys feel yourself getting better, and are you really looking forward to Patriot League play, knowing that things will get better? Yes, sir. We, we got that feeling. We're, we got a now type of attitude. You know, we're in the moment now. What happened last week, what happened... Two weeks ago, that doesn't matter. We're on to the next week. We want to be 1-0 each week. We, you know, there's – forget about the past. And I'll tell you what, Marco, if you're still in the now in two weeks, you're going to be getting some wins. Congratulate, uh, good, congratulations on a great performance personally. Good luck next week at Princeton. All right, thank you, sir. You're right. Gary, Michael, back to you guys. All right, John, thank you very much. We'll get back to uh, John in a bit. But uh, we'll be back with some highlights and some final words from us, and then we'll send it down to Phil and John. We are back. It is the post-game show, and it is brought to you by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. Our player of the game was presented by Coca-Cola. Experience the Coke side of the life. All right, uh, as we're going to take a look at the highlights from uh, from this ball game, and then Mike and I will send it back to John. Well, there were a lot of highlights. You know, Lafayette, they struggled defensively a little early, but they were stopping the run. They just couldn't stop Ryan Cragen, who ended up in the game with eight catches for 125 yards and two touchdowns. He actually left the game with an injury. You're going to see the pressure right here on the quarterback, but he gets it off to Zadok Scott, who's going to end up, that's the first of his two touchdowns. He played extremely well. Lafayette even blocked a field goal here. They stopped another drive. So this defense really stepped up today, and I think they just ran out of gas a little bit toward the end of the game. But you can see the pressure. Good to see Malik Camp getting some free rushes in there, and that's going to be finished off by Damon Washington. But, uh, you know, Brooks is the guy. Brooks is the guy we came in talking about. He's going to wear you down. You know, he earned every one of that 202 yards. And a lot of people said, well, Brooks is going to run for 200. But he didn't do it on 10, 15, 12 carries. I mean, he did it on 29 carries. And a lot of those yards, especially I think he had probably 75 yards in the fourth quarter, a couple big runs, very smart him for him there to get down. This was one where they had that first and goal with the one-yard line and two tight ends and just kind of washed it in there. Lafayette lost a little bit of a gap integrity here in the fourth quarter, and I think that was a little bit of fatigue. But look at that hit there by Olivas. Pops up in the air. You see here Thomas picks it up. 
He gets up a little gimpy, but he's going to be okay. And a couple plays later, Joe Gillette's going to haul this little fade route in over the top of the DB right there, and that's going to cut it in. Here's the two-point conversion, which got this to a three-point game with two minutes left in the game. And Lafayette now to the defense. They had to come back. They couldn't do it. They gave up the touchdown run, as you see Zadok Scott's second touchdown of the game there from a guy the quarterback, Shoemaker, who played a really warrior-type game here. Defense played well. Offense needs a little bit more out of them pre in that middle part of the uh, of the game where they had some empty possessions. But if, Lafayette, good things ahead. If they're able to put a complete game together, there will be some Ws for this football team. Remind, re, just a reminder, a bye week next week for Lafayette. Then they're at Princeton, at Georgetown. You'll be able to watch that game on the Patriot League Network. And then back with us on the 26th, Bucknell and Fordham back-to-back on the Lafayette Sports Network. That's it from up here in the booth. We send it down to John and Phil to wrap it all up. Thank you very much, Gary and Micah, as usual. A, a terrific job by you guys. And uh, Phil, uh, you know, nothing grows in the darkness. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, you look at the record and you're over. Yep. Uh, the challenge for John Garrett right now, and you, he doesn't see it as a challenge. He knows what he has in that locker room. Right. But you and I talked briefly about it. You know, when you're five and zero, oh, I don't care who you play, you feel like you're five and zero. Oh. And when you're zero and five, you feel like you're zero and five. What's that challenge like? And, and no matter what the circumstances are, you know, obviously you see a lot of positive out, out of this. Uh, you know, we're scoring some points. Uh, we're getting, you know, a lot of experience out of it. We're getting those uh, younger uh, underclassmen in, into the game. But you're still zero and four, zero and yeah. five. Yeah. Um, and and that, yeah, that's that's tough. And, and, you know, uh, again, the, the fight on this team, it, it, you want to you want to believe that they can uh, continue this gradual climb uh, in improved play and then it will translate uh, into league wins. Uh, I heard Mike uh, Joseph talk about Brooks and his effectiveness running the football today. And he ended up with over, I think, 200 yards, yeah. but 75 in the fourth, period, uh, fourth quarter. And, you know, he took 29 or 30 carries to do yeah. it. But. We looked at the numbers last week against Delaware. That's what this team does. They're yep. big and strong, and they're going to pound you. Yeah, and, and and again, it comes down to you know uh, the big plays. You know, we gave up a couple big plays. We're down on the one. We got them pinned at the one yard line. They come back and you know throw for a fifty yard you know fifty yard pass. Um, you know, eventually uh, it, you know Brooks you know breaks break a one. couple yeah. out, um, and that's again what they do. Um, and we're close. We're and I, I'm just going to see this, and we've heard John Garrett say that a number of times. So you talk about uh, the 50-yard pass from their from the shadow of their own goal line, uh, and then after we score to bring it within three, uh, Brooks breaks one up the middle, and and it, you just hear the yep. wind go out. But it's it's like we're knocking on the door, yep. and John has talked about what he's talked about breakthrough. We're knocking on the door. Yeah. We kicked a little harder today. Unfortunately, our out-of-conference schedule picked like a steel door. <laughs> it's absolutely. really hard to break through with this schedule, yeah. but I see good things coming. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I wrote down uh, the other things were, were finish. You know, we got to learn how to finish a game. And I think this fourth quarter, you know, proved a little bit to me, you know, that the kids have some heart. Uh, what a great play by uh, Marco Olivas down at that goal line. You know, uh, perfect tackle, put his hat on the ball, came out. And then to, for them to come back down, and, and, and score, score. Yeah. and get back to, you know, within, you know, obviously a little bit too little too late, but no. uh, it, it does show you something. It, it, absolutely. And, you know, what's interesting is, uh, you know, we had a chance to pick that ball off in the air, and there was nothing uh. but uh, Fisher Field turf <laughs> out in front of, uh, of, of, of Yasir Thomas uh, for the score if he were to field it cleanly. W one last question, uh, Phil, uh, bye week next week. Good time, bad time. What are your, what are your feelings about the bye week coming up now? Um, I think it's good for us, you know, regroup a little bit again, you know, being being 0 and 5. Uh, I wish we were going into a league game after that. Uh, obviously, you have to come back with uh, against Princeton, another tough Ivy League team. Uh, so that's tough, but it'll it'll get us, uh, you know, two weeks to get healthy. Yeah, and for those of you interested in following uh, Lafayette down to Princeton, uh, certainly it's a short ride. It's a beautiful venue. Not only that, if you're not going to Princeton, it will be, I believe, uh, on national TV, ESPNU, I think, is going to carry our game. So with that, we will say our goodbyes from Fisher Stadium. My thanks to Phil Ng, of course, to Gary and Mike, who always do such a great job for us. To all the guys behind the scenes, Rick Giho and the RCN broadcast crew, it's always a lot of fun. They make us look good as much as that's possible, Phil. Uh, so for filling, I'm John Leone. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks back here at Fisher.